Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the Vaxi XE Wireless, Vaxi's first wireless mouse. Uh, they had the wired version drop either four or five months ago, so in terms of the shape, um, the shell, and most of the buttons, it is identical, but it is their first wireless mouse, and they decided to go with a 3395 implementation. Feels very good, and it is available for $120, so it does compare to Zowie, who recently launched their first wireless mice as well with a 3370 available for $150. So obviously that's not the end all be all, but it does seem like with Vaxi you are getting a better value. If you are unfamiliar with the shape, the way I look at it is kind of Vaxi's take on a GPX, sort of like a mashup between a GPX and a Zowie S2. So yeah, as you can see, it definitely shares similarities with both mice. It's on the larger side. It's not high profile in the back, like something like the XM1R, it's definitely highest towards the middle. And it is a good shape for relaxed claw. You can also like palm grip it and even fingertip. It's a pretty versatile shape if you have larger hands. I do personally find the XE to have a bit too wide of a shape. It flares out just a bit too much at the bottom, so I can't really move it around in my hand too well while aiming. But that might be a design choice because Vaxi does advertise it as having a stable aim feeling. And I definitely agree with that because the wide, like somewhat bulky shape along with the mid-range weight, I'm not going to say it's heavy because it's 76 grams. That is not a heavy mouse. Um, pretty similar to Zowie Wireless, honestly. But because of the weight and the wider shape, it is a mouse that you're not really going to be overshooting with if you're looking for something smooth and just easy to have full control of i think that this is a good mouse so yeah honestly if you are looking for a more traditional ambi mouse that will fill up your hand but isn't like a gpx shape basically this is another offering i don't think that the weight really takes away from it yeah it's 76 grams like 10 grams lighter would be nicer but it is a vaxi product so like all of my other vaxi products i don't have any issues when it comes to quality it's built like a tank very impressive across the board there's not really any weak points all of the buttons are solid in terms of quality um, and yeah i think all of the buttons are the same as the other version so it's wano switches with 70 grams of force to activate but they do feel extremely light and spammable you can see there is a little bit of like pre-travel but it's nothing that really ruins the click feel they feel very bouncy and nice the scroll wheel encoder is just a standard alps encoder it's not going to be very notchy and loud like zowie wheels not that that is going to make a big difference in game, but it's just like a small quality of life thing. And the side buttons are really nice. They have a high quality feeling. There is a little bit of post travel on mouse four if you press towards the top, but it's nothing I noticed until I started looking for it. But yeah, honestly, side buttons, very snappy, very nice, well positioned. I just don't have any complaints about them. All the buttons feel exceptionally good in game, which is really all that's going to matter on the mouse. You can change the debounce setting on the bottom of the mouse with the button, obviously go to 2MS. Um, if you're not having any issues with it, sometimes I know it's like if you slam the mouse, it will click on 2MS, so you can just go to 4. But yeah, now getting to more important stuff like the sensor. As I mentioned before, this is a 3395 implementation. You can see the dongle here. It's a pretty thick one. It is only 1K Hertz polling. Uh, but the sensor does feel very like clean and just smooth tracking. It does have motion sync enabled. And what I've noticed with some wireless implementations, especially on 1000 Hertz is it's, I don't know if it's interference or polling rate inconsistency, but it just won't be completely smooth tracking. And it seems like Vaxi, it is like, I'm not gonna say a cut above, but it's just an exceptional wireless implementation. But honestly, if you ask me in a blind test between this and Zowie's 3370 implementation, like which is the better sensor, I don't think I would have an answer because in game it is going to feel largely the exact same. But yeah, for what it's worth, it is the newest tech. It is a solid implementation. So I really, um, I'm happy to see that Vaxi got it right. I'm really looking forward to their offering of the NPO1S in wireless because that's my favorite Vaxi shape. The XE wireless, not saying it's a bad shape, it just doesn't really stick out from the crowd too much, and I would just recommend going with the GPX. It's over 15 grams lighter. Um, personally, a shape that I'm a bit more comfortable with the width of, with the width, wow. But yeah, it's really gonna come down to what you value in the mouse. Some other things I didn't cover, like the coating. It might appear like it's a sweat magnet, but really I just have this hoodie on and the heat's on in my apartment, so there's a lot more like moisture on my hands than there normally is. It's a similar coating to Zowie once again, so it is going to be a somewhat wetter, grippy, rubberized feeling coating. 
coating. So very good for performance. It's not going to be a cheap, slippery feeling coating. And the stock skates are just large standard PTFE skates. People are harping on me in my EC2 video because I called these Teflon skates. Everybody knows that black dyed PTFE, you just refer to it as Teflon. Um, but people were just like, oh, you're an idiot. I'm not an idiot, you're an idiot. But that is besides the point on the XE wireless, you're getting some not especially thick, actually these might be their 0.6 millimeter um, thick feet. I had no issues with them, honestly. They seem like relatively controlled PTFE skates. This is on a Pulsar's cloth pad review of it soon, not the fastest pad out there. But yeah, definitely thicker and I would say a bit better than the Zowie stock skates, but again, nothing that it should be a deciding factor between the two mice. Um, so is it going to be a Zowie killer? I wouldn't say so. Um, it's a better value, sure, but if you really want the EC2 shape, the only way you're gonna be able to get that is through Zowie. And even though Vaxi does have Zowie edged out in terms of price and tech, I just would not say the differences are massive enough to just totally not consider Zowie's wireless offerings. Um, but yeah, the XE wireless, I definitely think there is a market for it. It is a quality and performance focused mouse. They made a blog post on that. They just really can't make the weights any lighter and keep the same quality standards they hold themselves to. So who knows what that exactly means, but it just does not seem like ultra lightweight is what they're shooting for. This mouse, honestly, it is a seal of approval level product. I could wait just until they come out with the NPO1S, see if that is a mouse that I like really love. So yeah, I think I will do that. Nothing really against the XE wireless. It's just something I know I'm not going to come back to or really think moves the market. I'm trying to in 2023, keep the seal of approval a bit more exclusive to things that I actually use and like 100% recommend. But yeah, if you're interested in this mouse, by all means go for it. I do think it's out of stock right now, but they will be restocking it with more colors. Um, which is pretty sick. They have like blue, orange, the whole nine. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be all for this review. Something big and very special in terms of mouse reviews coming very soon. If you know, you know, um, but make sure to leave a like and subscribe on this video. If you enjoyed the review, any other comments, leave them or any other questions, leave them in the comments below. My God, I don't know why that is always so hard for me. Um, but yeah, peace out.